Shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, before we get this epistle started, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechak, Wadash. Double honors as always to the apostles, the elders, and the sense of Akim of Great Millstone, who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you're here for bear and sincere citations as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bird among that number, which are the Hebrews, the life foreigners scattered among the heathen that like the heathen. And this is an epistle that I had entitled The Elect Literally Carries the World on their Back. And um this epistle it came to me as I was um as I was meditating upon the roles of the elect of the nation of Israel. Okay. As well as um as well as the prophecy that the Heavenly Father Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah has laid out since before the foundation of the world and how things are already written to play out in human time. And also the fact that when it comes to the elect of the nation of Israel and the nation of Israel being the true biblical Hebrew Israelites, the so called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, the speckled bird, um, it's a lot that goes into um, why the Heavenly Father has chosen the elect for what he's chosen them for. But I'm going to go ahead and get the first precept that came to mind. And this is the book of. I believe it was as unto Gomorrah. Oh, Khan, the Wadi Habash Mel Shah. This is the book of Khan. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter one, and I'm gonna start at verse seven, and it reads. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour. It's like your land, strangers devour it in your presence. And it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. And the daughter of Zion is left in, as it's like, and the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage and a vineyard, as a lodge and a garden of cucumbers. As a besieged city, right? Because the the, uh, the daughters of Zion is a uh, symbolic of the children of Israel. All right, as a, as all twelve tribes of the entire nation. And right now, all right, spiritually speaking and literally speaking, we are basically besieged because we've been exiled out of the Holy Land by Yahweh Bashmi Al Shaf for um, transgressing His law, statutes, and commandments. And now He has uh, Esau, Edom, the basis of men. Ruling, ruling in our holy land and um, by extension ruling the entire earth and Esau Edom for those that are new are the, is the, uh, the self-proclaimed so-called white man who's not actually white but he's indeed the red Hebrew Edomite and that also been called the devil and Satan that the Bible speaks of devil meaning deceiver Satan mean adversary and accuser alright the physical incarnation of the spiritual demon Satan now um, the point Verse 9, and this is the reason you know why I got this epistle through the spirit of Pabi Yahweh Al Shah. And it reads, Except the Lord Yahweh Tazabawath had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Now that scripture doesn't mean that um the entire nation of Israel would have became a bunch of alphabet people, even though you got a bunch of wicked Jake that's into that too. But what this is saying is, unless the Lord had left us a remnant, all right, that would actually return back unto him and keep his law, statutes, and commandments, we'd have been um, we'd have been destroyed like Sodom and Gomorrah, all right? And uh, the remembrance of us would have been like unto Sodom and Gomorrah's remembrance, which is, when you think Sodom and Gomorrah, for those that are, um, you know, have some type of basic remembrance of Bible history, you know, you think about the city that was... Uh, rife with Moism and all types of uh, weirdo activity and the Lord destroyed that city for its wickedness and now every time you think about Sodom and Gomorrah you think about the city that burnt with fire and brimstone by, by Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah so the Lord is saying that 
the nation of Israel would have been in a same in a similar position or predicament had the Lord himself not left the remnant because this isn't of our own will. All right, we didn't wake up to the knowledge that we're Hebrew Israelites of our own will. We woke up because Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, he had mercy, all right, and you know, he wanted to um he wanted to uh to hollow his holy name, which we profaned among the heathen. All right. And right now we have it where even in, even in um in real time right now we have this exact prophecy playing out okay the remnant which is the hopeful elected the nation of israel and um adawan radazah um i'm that very number that gets to be revealed as the the very elect all right because right now all of us that are doing this work start with our elder apostles elder bishops and the archimon down of great millstone and those that teach the likewise doctrine of the, of the affiliate camps as well um we all basically are under the title of hopeful elect until Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah reveals who's the actual elect. But, you know, like the elders and apostles always say, with the, all the all the weirdo activities and false doctrines and stuff that these other Israelite camps and these other Jakes in general be having going on, you know, we like our chances. Okay? Now that doesn't mean that, you know, we're gonna sit right here and not do anything because, oh well, these guys are going off. I know I got I know I got this in the bag. I'm definitely gonna be uh, receiving a chariot ride out of here. No, that's not what that's saying. That's what this is saying is basically or what the elders and apostles were saying by that statement is basically Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, he's balanced, he's fair. He's gonna reward those that do his work and those that basically know his will and choose not to do it, he's gonna beat them with many he's gonna beat them with many stripes. Alright? And when you see Jake going off so consistently and so maliciously, like a lot of these Israelite, these so-called Israelites do, these vain and unruly talkers amongst the circumcision, it basically puts you in the spirit of, um, you know, thanking uh, Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah for keeping you in this truth, and you pray to him that he keeps you in this truth and take not his Holy Spirit from you, because there's been many of Jakes that got lukewarm or got complacent over whatever reason, over the fact that the Lord hasn't put them through enough hell or. You know, the Lord may have given them enough of, a, uh, you know, some type of leeway as far as like having a woman that throw it back on them and all some type of stuff or having a, a decent job where you can get your daily bread. And then Jake gets simple and forget that, yeah, you are you you are right because the Lord's having some type of mercy on you, but you still in captivity. You can't lose sight of that goal. And it takes a really um, it takes a real high level of faith and understanding and wisdom to realize that no matter what type of victuals you get on this side, you still in captivity. So you still got a job to do that Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah did not relieve you of. All right, you weren't relieved of your duties, and you will not be relieved of your duties in this spiritual war until Lord Yahweh Shah Hamashiach returns on the orders of the Heavenly Father Yahweh, and he beams up the elect of the nation of Israel in those chariots. Okay, and then also additionally, let me go ahead and get this precept, and I may have to wrap it up. Uh, Romans, the book of Romans, chapter eight. Okay. And let me see. Come on. Romans chapter 8, verse 19, and it reads For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of the Most High. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who have subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself. Also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of the Most High Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body. Right, so. All of the creation is groaning at this point, right? You know, everybody, including the heathen, whether they uh, want to admit it or not, the world is not in a better case with Esau, Edom, the self-proclaimed so-called white man ruling over it. We and you know, food is being polluted every single day. Children are being deleted. Children are being kidnapped. Children are being raped. All other types of things, bro. All manner of, of wickedness is going on in this man's kingdom, in Esau, Edom's kingdom, all right? And the elect, if it wasn't for Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah choosing the elect himself, the Lord would have already destroyed this place because too much wickedness is going on. 
All right, so just, just the elect being alive, you know, the Lord is uh, reserving this place for destruction, but he's protecting the elect because the elect is going to be the ones who, uh, Yahweh Bashmi al Shai, that, that usher in a new age and, um, and righteousness. But that's all I had right now for this epistle. I got to get to the plantation. Hopefully this, hopefully this lesson was edifying and exhorting to the elected nation of Israel, to the hopeful elected nation of Israel. Once again, I want to give all praise and honor and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. I beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh, Shah, Ba'ashem, Rechak, Wadash, Dabon, as always, to the Apostle and the great millstone. Peace and salutations to the elect. Shalom.